because I'm doing the entire dish out of one pan on one stove sitting on one boat. <laughs> Means we can fish today. I'm Joshua Schwartz. I'm the chef and owner of Travel Creole Hospitality. Uh, we're in Smallest Bay. Smallest Bay with a fish on. Cooking some halibut on the water. Caught a halibut today. We did it. So we're gonna cook it up for lunch here. Mise en place, or having all your ingredients in one place is really important, especially when you're out cooking on a boat or away from your kitchen at home. The dish I'm doing is halibut with an amitricana, which is a classic Italian preparation of usually pork jowl, but I'm gonna use uh, applewood smoked bacon. A little tip on applewood smoked bacon. If you're doing something like this and you're not cooking bacon like breakfast strips, you can always find the odds and ends and pieces at the butcher shop for like a third of the price. We're gonna start with some onions and garlic. Another little thing, especially when I'm cooking away from my kitchen, I use this stuff called garlic gold. It's kind of a little inside little tip, little secret. Um, it's from California. Right now we're in the season where there's wild fennel growing all over California. So I'm gonna use some fennel bulb as well as some wild fennel. This plant that grows on the side of the road is completely different than this, which is fennel bulb. This grows in your garden, you eat the bulb. In preparation for today's lunch, we pulled the boat in and we're gonna pick some wild fennel. I just go for like the brightest yellow ones. This stuff is growing everywhere on the side of the road in California right now. I also have some pollen that I harvested uh, from in Napa. So I have this Napa fennel pollen and I'm gonna use that too. So I take um, all these flowers and I collect a lot of them and then put them in my dehydrator and then run them through a mesh and they come out like super fine like a powder that has this awesome fennel -y flavor to it as well. Some onions, fennel, bacon, tomatoes, pureed tomato as well as some cherry tomatoes from my garden and I'm going to cook all that together. I'm going to sear the fish. The starch component of this dish, I'm going to take this awesome bread from Della Fattoria, which is a bakery in Petaluma. Really delicious. I'm going to toast that up in the pan with olive oil first. And then we're going to take the fish and this beautiful tomato-y, fennel-y, onion-y, bacon-y sauce and pour it over top. And then I'm going to finish that with an olive uh, mayonnaise on top of that as well. <laughs> I worked in fine dining for a long time and never really was taught how to make pasta, just thrown into situations where I had to learn how to make pasta. And my sister lives in Italy and I was in between jobs at one point. My sister's like, you need to come visit me. I don't have much money. And she's like, well, you can come here and work. And I'm like, well, that, that works. Yeah, I'll do that. And she's like, you can just come work in a couple of my friends' restaurants and make some money um, and then go and travel. And I was like, hey, that sounds great. So I went to Italy. And when I got there, my sister was like, so what's your plan, really? What do you want to do when you travel? I want to learn how to make pasta from grandmothers like that have been making pasta their whole life. I just want to learn as much as I can about pasta from people that know it, because I've never really learned about it. I would stay in Florence, make enough money to go travel, go out, work at a place for free as an extern or like a like a, a comi, a stage type situation, and stay there and learn about pasta making. And when I felt like I learned enough, I would go off to the next location. I was working with this grandmother and I was making pasta by hand. She would come and look at what I made every day. She'd look at the pasta I made and she'd throw most of it away, like 90% of it away and leave a few pieces and be like, no good. So the next day I'd come in, make some more. She'd leave a little bit more. And every day was a little bit more, a little bit more. So basically I knew when it was time to leave, when she didn't throw any of my pasta away, I called my sister and I'm like, all right, I got this place down, I'm ready for the next spot. She never yelled at me, she just threw my pasta away. So I took this fish and I'm, I got a nice little sear on it. And I'm actually gonna just let it 
rest on top of that bread and it's not fully cooked yet. So the next thing I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna throw the bacon in. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of color on that bacon. And I'm using that, I use the same, I haven't washed this pan or anything. I put the bread in there. I got the bread toasted. I sear the fish in the same pan, one pan. So we're gonna add the onions now. And then we get a little color on those onions next. Soften them up, get a little color on them. Cooking is about building flavor. So I got the bacon fat in there and now I'm cooking the onions and the bacon fat and that's adding another layer of flavor. People say fat is flavor, fat's not flavor, fat carries flavor. So I'm gonna use that fat to enhance the flavor. Because you can take some fat and incorporate a flavor into it. That's why there's garlic oil, lemon oil, truffle oil, all those different oils. Because the oil, the fat, actually transfers the flavor really well. It holds the flavor really well. So I can do that right in this pan. Like this bacon fat tastes like onion. So now this bacon fat tastes like onion and garlic. Now this bacon fat tastes like onion, garlic, and fennel pollen. So I'm building the flavors in that fat. Something that a lot of people don't really fully grasp when it comes to cooking is how you build those flavors. And I think a lot of it starts in the pan with some type of delicious fat. Whether it be butter, bacon fat, olive oil, canola oil, whatever it might be. That's the basis of getting things going here. Once it starts getting hot enough that it's like that onion starts frying up, then I'll add my tomatoes because once I add my tomatoes, it's gonna be moisture. And once you add moisture, you're gonna finish that same type of hard cook and it's gonna be more of a steam cooking situation after that. I don't wanna burn my garlic, so now I'm gonna add my tomatoes and just kinda of let them get a little fry to the skin, kinda of blister the skin up a little bit. And this is red diamond kosher salt, which is my favorite kosher salt. Uh, there's also Morton, which is the blue box. I prefer the red box over the blue box, the red diamond. I just think it actually has a different feel to it. It's made a little bit different and it melts into food a little bit better than the blue box. A little black pepper. Those skins, you can see they're starting to blister up, which is good, that's all I'm looking for. I just want them to start softening up like that. Everything's kind of coming together. And the next step is I'm gonna add some tomato puree tomatoes from my garden again that are pureed with a little garlic and olive oil and that's it. So in Italy this would be called amicicana. So that's a basic pasta sauce right there. I just kind of spruced it up. I have some fennel that's already cooked and I'm just going to add that too for a little bit more fennel flavor. I finished the sauce basically. That's all it is and it's just going to gonna lightly simmer so I put the fish back in it so the fish can kind of finish cooking in the sauce just like that so it's just gonna steam it slightly to finish it up as soon as that fish starts kind of flaking apart and falling apart then the dish is ready to put in the plate so we can eat it beautiful halibut from the bay and then our delicious brothy sauce here over top I we'll have a black olive mayonnaise that I just put a little bit of chopped up fennel top into. That's going to go on there too. So we got our fennel pollen, a couple little sprigs of that to garnish. And there we go. Meal out in Tamales Bay with halibut. So we have the halibut with the tomatoes, fennel, bacon, onions, olive mayonnaise, and some della fattoria bread ceviche that i made over here and i put a little onion blossoms on the top i love to serve ceviche with just saltine crackers and this is hot sauce that i make um, and then i have some homemade fennel sausage made with the napa valley fennel pollen again so this is whole little lunch here on the water small as bay it's pretty good guys